I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Hello, welcome to episode 120 of Wise Advice and continuing to climb up the chart. Today was an absolute record day again, 11,550 downloads for just for today alone. Um, and that's all because of you. That is you guys sharing the podcast, tuning into the podcast, letting other folks know where to find it, to download the app, uh, to find it in Stitcher or iHeart or whatever, fatdag.com, wherever you find it. But I truly appreciate you guys sharing this because it is a tool. We need daily focus. We need to make, make sure we stay mindful to what's going on in this journey. And one, one meeting a week, although it's very powerful, there's, there's six other days where we can kind of get off track. And so this is a tool where you can use, you know, with a bunch of other tools out there, but this is just one tool that you can use. And the fact that you guys share it, it really is, uh, it, it just makes me so happy. So thank you for continuing to share. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, out of the gate, the first email comes in from Shannon. Shannon writes in, says, Hi, Mike. I've been following your journey on Connect since early in my journey. I've just, follow, I've just found your podcast today, and I love it. I usually listen to audiobooks when I work out, but now I know I will be listening to you. I heard your call for lifetimers to share their story. So here's my story. This is my second serious journey with Weight Watchers. I first joined Weight Watchers in 1999 when the last of my four children turned one. I looked at pictures from his birthday party and I was truly embarrassed and unhappy with how I looked. I started in March of 1999. I reached goal by the end of that year and lifetime early in 2000. I had lost 69.7 pounds. I just figured that was it. I just knew that I could maintain my weight now that I had met my goal. Well, as many of us know, life has a way of throwing us off track. Raising four kids, working as a full-time RN, a wife, loss of my dad, moving, changing jobs, raising teenagers... All of that was hard enough, but throw in there Hurricane Katrina in 2005 and a forced relocation to South Carolina with a high school senior, freshman, and two younger kids, finding jobs, buying a house. Well, you can imagine the emotions and the stress, the anxiety and the sadness. I am a person who eats my feelings to comfort myself, so over time, I gradually abandoned all healthy habits that I had mastered on Weight Watchers. For many years, I dabbled with Weight Watchers off and on. I tried every other type of diet, never to reach goal, and then to start the cycle all over again. In 2010, my oldest brother was diagnosed with ALS. He was a vibrant, healthy father of five and a grandfather of three. He fought the fight of his life for three and a half years and succumbed to his disease in March 2013 at the age of 53. It took me a while to grieve this loss and to recognize that my mortality was a very real thing. I recognized that my brother had a disease that he had no control over and he would have given anything to regain his health. I realized that I needed to stop pretending to be okay with how I looked and I felt and I needed to face reality. I was on a fast track to bad knees, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, among other possible medical diagnosis. I have a very beautiful family and I have hopes and dreams of sharing many years of fun times with my family and hopefully many sweet grandchildren someday. I knew if I didn't do something about my health, I was not going to be able to enjoy the rest of my life the way that I wanted to. So my why became me. I want to live life fully. 
January 27, 2016, I joined Weight Watchers Beyond the Scale online only. I was committed to this being the last time I would ever have to take this journey again. But I didn't share this with anyone. I was afraid of failure. Even though I was telling myself this was my last time joining, I connected through Connect with others in the same boat as me, and this was really my support system. I taught myself the new plan, and I learned from connectors. I got motivation to keep working the plan. Over the first few months, I achieved success, and so I just kept on going. Eventually, people recognized that I was doing things differently, and I had to share with my family and my close friends. I also started walking because I knew that was one thing I could do almost anywhere and anytime and something I could continue for a lifetime. I have increased my workouts and achieved better fitness than I could ever have imagined. After one year, I lost 86.6 pounds. 15 months, I lost 100 pounds. And now, at 18 months, I have lost 112.2 pounds. I returned to my Weight Watcher lifetime weight in June, and I'm now two pounds away from my own personal goal. In the spring, I knew that the biggest change I had to make along this journey was to change my mindset and accept that this journey has no end. I began to search into getting a job with Weight Watchers. Part of that required that I get back into the meeting room. I did just that, and I've loved every meeting I've ever been to. I am now completing my leader training and I look forward to sharing my story and encouraging members and supporting them on their journeys. This plan is amazing. And as you have said, if you follow the plan, it works. You just have to follow the plan. I am not on a diet that I will get off someday. This Weight Watcher plan is for life. This plan is a tool to maintain a healthy lifestyle and to ensure that as long as I work the plan, I will maintain my lifetime status. I have every intention of doing that, and I'm happy to say I've just completed my second Weight Watcher meeting with my leader trainer, and I absolutely love doing it. I feel like this is where I am meant to be, and my Weight Watcher family and Connect family really mean the world to me. I realize the work is never done, but I'm ready and willing and able to reach my personal goal, maintain it, and help others find the strength and determination to do the same. Thanks, Mike, for always being a motivation and for all your time and the dedication to helping others realize their goals. Your podcast has has found a place on my phone, and I will listen faithfully to get ideas and motivation daily. Uh, Thank you, Shannon. Shannon, what uh, what a great story, and so I I understand um, that. And my first uh, reaction is is to 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 take a moment and to to grieve with you over the loss of your of your oldest brother. Um, you know that alone is enough to send you for a loop. And the fact that I love what you said in a way to honor him, even though you didn't say it specifically, was is you're right. He would have done anything to regain his health. And I think a lot of times that we forget that we take our health for granted and and we just accept the things that we that we have coming to us. We forget sometimes that we do have the ability to make a change and in his case he didn't. So if he could do anything to get healthy again, why can't we then then take our own time and say, "You know what? I just need to do everything that I can because there will be some times when I just there's nothing I can do about it." So I understand that. So my heart goes out to you for you and your family for that loss. Um, you know, I understand the devastation that is, and and to him, uh, to you and your entire family. So I get that. I also get that. You know, what started you down this path is a photo. For many of us, that's exactly what it takes. It takes that eye-opening experience for us to see that the fact that we need to see us as as the rest of the world sees us. You know, and you think about that for just a moment, and and so for the longest time, we look in our mirror, and we don't truly see what's there. It takes a photo. It takes a mirror from a dressing room or a department store that we weren't expecting to see that we catch a glimpse of, and that kind of shocks us into reality. So, So the fact that that is what propelled this journey way back in 1999, you've never forgotten that. 
you know, here we are, you know, 18 years removed from that incident, and you still had it, you know, etched into your mind pretty vividly. That is your why. That is the why that got you started. It never goes away until you solve it. The why will almost always be there. And so that is what got you to get going. It's interesting. You lost 69.7 pounds, and then you said, yeah, I got this. You know, now that I've met my goal, I can do this. And I think that is so common for a lot of us. It happened to me four times, and you've proven, you know, that that if you quit, if you give up on the program, you almost always, you will get a new join date, and almost always it'll be at a new higher weight. That was my goal going into this fifth and final time for me, was that I am not joining at a higher weight. I got really comfortable at, you know, when I was at 220 pounds, I didn't like it. And so I lost the weight, and then as I quit, I gained the weight back up to 220, but 220 no longer scared me because I'd been 220 before. It took until the scale got to 230 before I all of a sudden went, oh, wait a minute. And then so I lost the weight. And then I quit, and then I gained weight up to 230. And when I got to 230, it was no big deal because I'd been 230 before. And then I got up to 240, 245, and then all of a sudden I got scared again. And so I lost the weight. And I got all the way back down to close to goal, and then I quit. And I gained the weight. And again, same thing. I got to 240, 245. 245 didn't scare me because those are numbers that I've seen before. And it takes a brand new number. And I hear this a lot of times in the meeting room. One of the most common things I hear for the people who start is, this is the most I've weighed in my entire life. And that was true for me as well. So at 263, I walk in, and so I said, I'm going to do this for my fifth and final time. And just like you, I wasn't going to tell anybody. Because I'd done this so many times, my friends and family knew that I could do it. They've seen me do it before, but they also knew that I had a very strong history of quitting the program and giving up on it and gaining every single pound back. This time, just like you, I was completely afraid of failure, so much afraid of failure that other than a few very close friends, no one knew what I was doing. I was just changing my habits. I was just eating better, but I was attending a weekly meeting because I was fed up and I was going to get this done. I was committed and I wanted to get it done. That's a very real feeling. And you validated that. And as I read your email, I, you know, it couldn't help but go, yeah, I I understand everything you stated. Now, throughout your journey, you had some obviously some some very tragic events that happened that certainly you know led to some time where you had to figure life out and get back to a new normal. Uh, but what an amazing story when you finish this story with and then I lost one hundred and twelve pounds. I returned to lifetime in June. What an amazing accomplishment after everything you went through, your why was strong enough to continue to bring you back. It was continue to, you continued to fight and you wanted to get it done. Now, when you talk about, you know, your exercise, you know, it's really fun how you wrote, how you wrote this out is that you just started walking because one thing you could do almost anywhere, anytime, and you can do it for life. That's it. You don't need to do, you don't need to do crazy. All you need to do is just get some sort of additional intentional movement daily as an attendance goal, and that sets the mind up that this journey has no end, and it sets the mind up that you can win, and it sets the mind up that you are a fit, healthy person, and as you know, if you follow the plan, the plan works. You just have to follow the plan. You clearly did that. You don't lose 112 pounds on accident. You do that through deliberate focus, dedication, and you now are at a point where you are joining the team as a leader, and that right there is absolutely the best thing in your email that I've read. Congratulations on taking that step. I think that's an amazing part of this journey. The fact that, you know, one of the things I learned in a lot of the things that I do is is I figured out that when you reach back to help other people, more often than not, I get more benefit from helping than I believe the people who I'm helping get. That benefit that being a leader provides me 
it just a, it's one of those benefits you don't realize until you start doing it. But my reward is handing out those charms. My reward is walking into the meeting room and seeing the smiles from people who are getting it done. For people who have decided that they too can get this done, but they just need a little bit of motivation along the way. And to be able to provide just a little bit of that for them and to watch them week after week come in with smiles on their face and hand out the awards and say, congratulations, you're doing great, and have them say, thank you. Have them you know, tell me what it feels like to reach lifetime. That is the absolute best part of this journey. So I appreciate the fact that you are willing to, to reach back and show the world just how awesome being at lifetime is and you continue to be the prize. And as you be the prize, other people will join you, and you are going to be an amazing leader because you have an amazing story. And that story reminds everybody that you just can't give up. Shannon, thank you for your email. Congratulations. You're doing fantastic work, and it's an honor to walk this journey with you. Ellie writes in. She says, I know. In Weight Watchers, we call them non-scale victories. I have so many. I've been a Weight Watcher member since 1765. Well, it feels like it. On and off for about 100 times. I have managed to stay within 20 pounds of goal most of my life. I hit lifetime for the fourth time in June of 2015. And here I am again today trying to get those last pesky 10 pounds to go. I want them to go away so I can get back to my goal weight once again. My issue is overeating. It's not fitness. Since I discovered your podcast, I have had much more focus on tracking and recognizing that fitness is separate from my weight loss journey. One of my aha moments was when you talked about the difference between losing weight and maintaining weight being only six points. I woke up and I realized that I kind of suck at tracking, and that's probably why this last 10 pounds wants to hang around my hips. Listening to your podcast has been a huge help with my focus. My why is simple. I am 58 years old and I take no medication. I am stronger, healthier, and I'm definitely more fit than I have ever been. I am in great physical condition. I had kids very late in life and my baby just graduated from high school. I want to be that amazing grandma that goes to every Little League baseball baseball game dance recital, etc. Even though I was older when I had kids, I shot baskets with them on the driveway, played chase and keep away, and threw the baseball with them, chased them at the park, hung from the monkey bars, etc. My kids were my workout plan. Well, then they grew up. They both have gym memberships and are very physically fit, but they no longer want to play with their aging mother. And the grandbabies are, of course, yet to come. We are taking a family trip to the Rocky Mountain National Forest next month. I plan to hike right alongside my kids. In preparation, I have amped up the incline on the treadmill. My dog and I walk five miles every morning, and lately we have walked some very steep hills near our house. I live in Fort Worth, which is very hot and very flat. The dog and I walk really early to combat the heat. We started walking what I call uh, Fort Worth Mountain, the steepest area of Fort Worth. That's such a joke because it's so flat here, but this is the best we have to offer. The dog is my faithful walking buddy, but she hates Fort Worth Mountain. My rump is sore, but it's such a great feeling to feel more tone. I feel such a sense of accomplishment when I make it to the summit of Fort Worth Mountain. So here are the non scale victories. First, I continue to feel great. When I wake up every morning, I feel fit. You mentioned this in a previous podcast, and it resonated with me. I am mentally at goal. Just have to get the scale to agree with me. I recently had blood work done, and everything was in the normal range, and my blood pressure was low normal. But here is my biggest non-scale victory. I took my 11-year-old four-legged companion to the vet last week. He was shocked that she is in such great shape. She doesn't act like an aging dog. She has the stamina and the energy of a puppy. He said she is in better health than any 11-year-old dog he has ever seen. It's the walking. We do it religiously every day, 
We don't always conquer Fort Worth Mountain, but we always walk. So my plan isn't only benefiting me, it's helping my best friend as well. Thanks for all you do. I take you and the dog with me every morning. It's Fat Dag that pushes my rump up Fort Worth Mountain, and I'm working on those last 10 pounds. I'm getting it done because you remind me every single day. Thanks for all you do, Ellie. Uh, Ellie, um, yeah, great, great work for sure. You know, walking uh, every single day as an attendance goal clearly is working well. That's what I, when I talk about attendance goals versus performance goals, I love what you said. You have a performance goal set for, for hiking up this mountain, but some days you don't make it to the top and that is your attendance goal. But you say, I just go anyways, whether I make it to the top of this or not is irrelevant. The fact that I went out and got it done is the attendance goal. The attendance goal is what's going to carry you for a lifetime. Well, congratulations on being a member since 1765, uh, on and off for 100 times. Clearly, I think that's one for the record books. Uh, and you're so close to goal. You, you have the pesky 10 pounds, and that complacency bug certainly is at the point where you understand how that's impacting your journey. Your issue certainly is overeating, and it's not fitness. Your fitness side is very much very active. You're doing a great job with that. But, but as you know, the overeating part of this journey can certainly derail us a lot quicker than not working out. The absolute truth is the difference between maintaining your weight and losing weight is up to six points a day. Now, sure, it's different for everybody. But that is the range. And if you don't believe me, check it. Go into your app. Set your app to into, instead of you losing weight, just for a second, change it to maintaining your weight. And see what happens to your daily point allowance. You get up to six to figure out how many of those you can use. That's why we have five weeks of maintenance. So during that period, you figure out how many of those six you can eat and keep your weight exactly where it is without it jumping too high or without it going too low six points a day. So if you're not tracking, you know, coffee cream, if you're not tracking your ketchup, if you're accidentally eating six untracked points a day, you very easily could be overeating at a point where it stalls your weight loss. That is how we work the plan. It's not that I want you to, de to deprive you of eating. What I, what I want you to do is I want you to be conscious of what you're doing. I want you to account for everything you're doing. And then I want you to make the decisions as you're choosing what to eat based on everything you've eaten. You then get to make the choice on what it is you want and don't want. That's how you work the plan. That's how you work the plan properly. And when you work the plan, you'll get those last, last 10 pounds off. I promise you that. Now, you know, we all need the reminder daily that, that this job, this is something we have to do. We have to stay focused. I say daily. I even actually think it's every meal. Three or four times a day, it doesn't hurt to have a reminder that you're doing well. And those non-scale victories certainly play into that success. You know, you want to, first, you want to continue to feel great. You wake up every morning, and I love your words, I feel fit. Isn't that an amazing feeling? When you wake up every morning feeling fit, feeling like an athlete, it's an incredible feeling that you just can't buy and you certainly can't explain it. And it's so true. You know, when I go out and do a, an, a workout, I feel like a fit person. You know, and so therefore, because I feel like a fit person, the rest of my activity for the day falls in line with that. Because I feel fit, I then choose things that a fit person would eat. And I eat a lot better because the feeling I have, I don't ever want to go away. Now, I'm glad to go walking with you every morning. I'm glad to set that attendance goal with you. I'm glad that we're out there getting it done. And it absolutely is incredible that your 11-year-old pup is benefiting from all of the hard work the two of you are putting in. Ellie, congratulations. Uh, you are going to get it done. I know you're going to get it done. Can't wait until you do. Meredith writes in and says, Hi, Fat Dag. Thank you for your podcast. I listen daily, and I've been going back and forth through the archive. I've lost five pounds so far in a little less than a month. What has been the hardest, though, has been the emotional journey. 
I have avoided losing weight for a long time because I knew it would bring up a lot of pain and re- resurface issues of self-worth. I am now at a place where I want to deal with that hurt so I can live my life to its fullest potential. I am working with a therapist as well, and that is helping. But here are days, though, that the emotional toll seems too much. Well, if I just quit, I don't have to think about this anymore. I don't want it to be that. I don't want it to be that way, though. I want to push through it. I don't want to be the one crying at the back of the yoga class because I just can't keep up. I don't want the examples of disordered eating or eating in excess to be my only options. That is my why. I want to be able to deal with my with both my emotions and food in a healthy manner. I am learning how not to eat my feelings and I'm trying to relearn new thought patterns about food and myself. When I hear a friend or family member talk about food or themselves negatively, it's like pouring salt in a wound. Yesterday, I cried so hard after having lunch with my mother and my sister. The comments they made are the same things I've heard my whole life. But when I'm working on me and my weight loss journey, it made me realize just how poor their view of food is and how much of that I've internalized. I have looked back through the archives to see if you've addressed the emotional journey and I didn't see anything. I'd appreciate it if you could speak to this at some point. My journey is just beginning. Thank you for being my wingman, Meredith. Meredith, uh, one of the things that I say about this journey is I believe almost all of this journey happens above your mouth. It's a very emotional, mental journey that we have to understand. Uh, you know, I'm glad that you're sitting working with a therapist because it's certainly not an area that I'm trained in. But what I understand to be true is that uh, as I relate it to my own journey, is when I finally understood the relationship to food and my feelings and how they were completely disconnected, and I was able to break that disconnect, and I was able to understand that you know that just because I felt bad, food was not going to solve that. When I got to that realization and I began to appreciate all the hard work that I was doing and I could accept me for who I was, then that is when everything turned around for me. Uh, I'm glad you're listening daily because we do need that daily focus. And and you're right, the days that we don't get a show, uh, you can go back through the archive and I appreciate you doing that. That keeps you engaged in the process every single day, whether we get a show out daily or not. Uh, but so thank you for, for digging through the archive. You've lost five pounds. You've lost five pounds because you were focused on you and you are taking care of yourself and you're relearning all of this stuff about food and the emotional journey. And the fact that you've demonstrated that you've lost five pounds is clearly proof that you can get it done. Continue doing exactly what you're doing. Find the support network that's going to help you. I have an email coming up on the in the next uh, coming up real soon after yours, I should say. I have an email that's going to give you a couple other tips that I want to share with you. But I want to end it right here: is that you can do this. You absolutely can do this. If you look at you know all of the emails that you're digging through the show, you hear some of the amazing emails that we get coming in and going. A lot of the emails talk about, you know, how life completely to turn upside down for a lot of folks. And as soon as you realize that you're not alone in this journey, you know, it doesn't take long when you post something on Connect for someone to come along and say, yeah, me too. And it doesn't take long for every episode that we do, you know, somebody out there listening goes, yeah, that happened to me too. And then almost always that person makes it past that. And they push forward and they get to goal or they get to lifetime or they get to a much better place. That is the spirit that you need to live with. You need to know that all of the stuff is very valid. All of the stuff is so true. But it also doesn't have to be that way. And then because they made it through, you can make it through. You absolutely can do that. So keep up the great worth and check this out, Meredith. Can, uh, continue to listen, and you're going to find out something that's going to be a very helpful tool for you. Angela writes in. Angela says, "Hi, Dag. Uh, I just listened to episode 89, 
and Patty, Patty with an I, as in Skinny Mini, shared some amazing things that I think deserve some more thought and discussion in the Weight Watcher community. Patty mentioned at one point that she felt she couldn't transform and her health for herself because she had always let herself down in the past. My guess is that 99.9% of your listeners can relate to that. It's probably why so many of us have a why that involves our children, spouses, and others. But she also mentioned some chaos in her childhood, alcoholism, parental neglect, and other forms of trauma that really shape an individual. The more members that I meet and I connect with, the more I see a common thread of childhood abuse, neglect, or mistreatment. Folks growing up in homes with addiction, physical abuse, a parent who abandons the family, a parent with severe mental health issues. This source, as this sort of insecurity uh, from childhood, re- really shapes an individual. They grow up believing that they aren't worthy and that they aren't lovable and they aren't capable of thriving. They grow up believing that they needn't bother take care of themselves because they don't deserve that care or that it's selfish to do so. In the past year, I've explored my own chaotic childhood and discovered adult children of alcoholics and other dysfunctional families and lots of literature on this phenomenon. The only thing I really want to share with your listeners is that, to me, the best way to break these childhood cycles of abuse, mistreatment, and self-loathing is to become your own loving parent. To take care of yourself the way a loving parent would, even if you didn't have that benefit from such a parent. This means protecting yourself, meeting your basic needs, putting yourself to bed when you're tired, feeding yourself nutritious food when you're hungry, saying no more sweets when you're grazing on junk, saying good job when you reach that milestone, setting boundaries so that others can't exploit or control you, prioritizing your own health and happiness, because that's what a loving parent does. This realization has transformed my weight loss and my relationship with food. I made Lifetime in June, and I know Weight Watchers is a lifelong part of my parenting plan for myself. I hope some folks out there can relate and use this concept to take exquisite care of themselves. Thanks for being a conduit for such rich conversations, Dag. Take care, Angela. Angela, um, that's exactly it. Be your own loving parent. You know, um, you know, much of what you said, um, you know, there are many people, you know, as we, just like you, as I explore and talk with people, that is a common theme. And I can also tell you that there's probably equally as many people who that doesn't relate to, but your situation, your solution absolutely is the same regardless. You have to protect yourself in this journey. You have to love yourself in this journey. You have to you have to take care of you. And the fact that you've written it down so beautifully, you know, it, it makes me just really kind of want to end the show right on this and say, you know, this is it. Because I don't have a ton to add to this. You you gave absolutely great advice. The only piece that I'll add is I will validate exactly what you said. For me, for my journey. Even though I didn't have much of what you spoke to, I, deal, I still had some, some, a little bit of depression that I didn't understand until I made it, made it past goal. I still had some emotional issues that I had to deal with, and all of them started to get better when I accepted me for who I was. When I said, this is who I am, and then I took to me to take care of myself, found support found people who could cheer me on as I continued to cheer myself on, prioritizing my own health and happiness. That's when everything changed. Angela, thank you for your amazing email. Uh, I I really appreciate you taking the time to write in and to share because that is how we continue to make progress and make it to our goal. Folks, I want to know what it is that you're celebrating. I want to know, you know, how is your journey going? Let's get it on the air. Let's, let's go to fatdag.com. Click on Listen Now. Send in your stories, your comments, your celebrations. I'll work them in as part of the show. 
one of the coolest things about this show is that that we learn that this journey, although different for everybody, has a lot of common threads that we weave together. I've said it before. I get a lot of folks who I see on Connect them as they share the show or they comment. They say things and they attribute them back to me. They tag me on Connect when they do so. And I read what they write. And on occasion, I go, you know, I actually didn't say that. But they attribute that to me. And the best I can surmise is that as they hear something on the show, internally, their mind paints a picture and that picture fits into what they believe to be true. But the journey being so similar, we all are able to hear what we need to hear as we need to hear it. And that enables us us all to find the way to win. That's why I want your email. That's why I want to share them on the air. I want you to be proud of what you're doing, and I want others to understand that they too can make it to Lifetime that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus.